Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Ali Cormie Kentreep here with a breakdown of the action. In today's session, where we saw a pretty tough time for the market heading back after the Turkey Day weekend, Ken. Yeah, I was a little a uh, little surprised to, to see the intensity behind the selling. We did have some pretty sizable percentage uh, declines, uh, but we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, three stocks uh, to watch uh, today. I want to take a look at Axon uh, Enterprise, uh, formerly known as uh, Taser. They've branched out with some new products and, and services. AXON is the symbol there. Uh, Champion X, uh, tracked in the uh, oil and gas drilling uh, group. Uh, CHX is uh, the symbol there good uh, positive response to earnings recently. And finally, uh, in India Bank, uh, HDFC Bank. Uh, we're talking about, you know, strength in financials. So let's uh, let's look, look at India. All right. Well, we'll take a look at those three stocks. First, let's analyze the major indexes. So today we had the NASDAQ down 1.6%. The S&P 500 and Dow down 1.5% each. It was small caps, that got hit the hardest today with the Russell 2000 down at 2.1 percent. Ken, you know, uh, we we did have quiet action uh, in the holiday week, but we also had underneath the surface some pretty compelling stock moves. Uh, so a little disappointing to see that uh, constructive action uh, getting, I mean, maybe somewhat undone uh, with the hard hits that we saw today. Yeah, I think that's a good way of uh, putting it. Uh, a little bit uh, undone here, but uh, you know, we had a pretty easy uh, comparison to uh, volume being a, a half session. So you can see volume is going to end up uh, being average today, well above what we saw uh, Friday. But uh, so we'll we'll probably you know mark a, a distribution day for both uh, the Nasdaq and the S P five hundred today, a higher volume uh, decline. But as you can see here, the Nasdaq is uh, still holding above some uh, support levels here. They were saying the the real catalyst for the selling was mm. just this unrest in uh, in China, as uh, you know people are obviously getting a little you know fed up with the lockdowns and uh, they want the the country to. To, to open up, they've been getting maybe some mixed messages from from China, uh, so that uh, that's what fueled negative sentiment today. And of course, the fear is is if China continues to stay locked down and COVID really you know continues to be a, a problem and it's sort of sticky like uh, inflation is in the U.S. Uh, you know there there could be contagion there and it would just kind of exacerbate this uh, this slowdown that uh, everybody is is feeling. So right. uh, maybe not entirely surprised to see the market uh, react the way it did today. Again, the percent declines were, were pretty sizable, but uh, um, we're still in a confirmed uptrend. I think that's the, the bottom mm-hmm. line, and uh, you know, we'll see what tomorrow brings. We will. Uh, yeah, so definitely some concerns overseas there. We have the NASDAQ coming down to the 21-day line, and it has been lagging. So let's take a look at the S&P 500, which has been faring better and is now in a power trend. Trend, which uh, means we have this uptrend. We also have the action above a rising 21-day line, which is above a rising 50-day line. So that's positive. But at the same time, you have this 200-day line looming large. So it seems like maybe we have a potential potentially a similar scenario brewing that we had over the summer with a power trend, but then resistance at the 200 day line. That's not to say that this uh, time it's going to play out the same way, but there's definitely some concerns that that could happen. Well, you're really going to need, like I've said before, you're really going to need, uh, you know, pretty, pretty strong uh, signs of institutional buying. So we're going to need to see some volume if the S&P is going to, you know, move above this 4,000 level and and make a decisive move above the 200-day moving average. It's going to need volume. It's going to need some conviction behind the buying. And that's a, you know, uh, that's a kind of a big question mark uh, at this point. Are uh, institutions really willing to to step in here amid all of the uh, uncertainty that the market is is dealing with uh, right? now. So um, might be a time where we're going to you know, kind of step uh, step back here uh, a little bit. But just like the uh, the NASDAQ, the S&P is still uh, in a confirmed uptrend. And you can see, even though the selling was pretty harsh today, it, uh, it, it broke below the 10-day moving average and still pretty comfortably above that, uh, mm-hmm. that 21-day line. So maybe it'll just end up being a, a test of the, the 21-day line. Um, you know, certainly the action in individual stocks today was, was, was pretty, right. pretty, pretty, pretty messy. So yeah, and I feel like, uh, you know, further emphasizes how we've been handling this market all year, the playbook of 
focusing on those early entries, taking profits into strength, not getting too greedy because we've seen uh, just some pretty quick and short-lived moves to the upside uh, and just a select handful of names that have really resisted this tough market this year. Yeah, I think we've been pretty consistent on uh, IBD Live about, uh, you know, maintaining pretty conservative uh, exposure. I mean, typically when you're in a, a confirmed uh, uptrend, it's not uh, uncommon to, to, to go 75, 80, 90 percent, even fully, uh, fully invested. But with this uh, downtrending 200 day line and, uh, you know, clearly the S&P 500 still facing some uh, some overhead mm -hmm. supply issues here. Um, you know, and again, all of the uncertainty that's out there. There's just a lot of a lot of things the market is uh, is trying to 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 figure out here. You know, uh, it, it, uh, how how much of a slowdown is is there going to be in the in the U.S. And uh, so it's just de kind of dealing with a lot of questions right now, not finding clear uh, answers. So it, it it seems like like a, you know on the leaderboard we're about 65 percent uh, in, invested, and you know other uh, other traders I know still you know 50 50 percent mm -hmm. invested. So that seems to be, especially after today, seems to be still a, a right. good, a good percentage uh, at this point. Yeah. yeah, or even lighter if you have mm -hmm. been taking those uh, profits and not finding things to replace it with. But mm -hmm. uh, we will be taking a look at some potential watch list names soon. But first, a quick breeze through a couple of other uh, broad market charts. Uh, the Dow taking a. a Pretty notable hit today, but it's still leading and only coming down to its 10-day moving average. So still pretty impressive there. IWM, which tracks the Russell 2000, some pretty clear resistance here at the 200-day line, continuing coming down to its 21-day line. And then also we want to check in on the energy sector briefly. Here's a look at XLE closing down about 2.7% today and essentially at the lows of the day, even though uh, USO, which is a rough proxy for uh, that underlying commodity there, did uh, come off of its lows uh, by a pretty significant amount by the end of the day. But energy stocks really getting hit hard in today's session. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, XLE, you can see, uh, you know, pretty sharp uh, break of the 80 level on the 21 day line. It was interesting. Oil actually reversed higher. It went below $74 a barrel today. And you'd have to go back to basically the start of the year, maybe uh, December. So almost a year um, uh, it's been since uh, oil went below $74 a barrel. But uh, it did it did manage to uh, pair a lot of those uh, losses. But uh, yeah, this uh, this drop in oil again, China, China related, you know, if, if COVID is going to, is going to stick around that, that country and, and lockdowns are going to have to stay uh, in place and, you know, COVID continues to spread. I mean, certainly that's going to uh, hurt uh, demand for oil. So that, that makes uh, the upcoming OPEC meeting December 4th, I think it's next, uh, next week, um, makes it um, even more uh, important. Of course, OPEC uh, in October, they cut output. Now the Wall Street Journal reported not that long ago and other uh, agencies that uh, they may consider increasing output by a half million barrels uh, a day. So uh, we'll see what OPEC has to say next week. But uh, oil, you know, as volatile as Ever. Yeah, we'll have to see. And although we are above the low from last week, this is the first close below that 21 day line can in a couple of months here since this strong move off of those late summer, early fall lows. So we'll we'll have to see. Yeah, and uh, oil. You can see last week it, uh, it it fell sharply below that uh, ninety level when it went below the two hundred day line. But there were buyers there that lifted lifted it up. So we'll see. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. see how XLE trades from here. Yes. And now let's take a look at a couple of stocks to watch, including AXON. Uh, I guess I'm used to typing XOM for Exxon Mobil. My uh, right. my hands just uh, you know muscle memory there. But AXON Axon Enterprise here, which shot up after its last quarterly earnings report, and now it's uh, continuing to show strength after that breakout. This is on your watch list, Ken. What setup would you would be ideal from here that you would want to see? 
Well, listen, you know, you and I have been doing the SMT video for a while. And we've been talking about a lot of these earnings gaps, and uh, we haven't talked about Axon, uh, but they, they had a really nice uh, earnings gap. You can see when uh, revenue uh, accelerated nicely from uh, from the prior quarter up uh, 34%. Uh, uh, earnings were down uh, 49%, but Axon does uh, is a company that is still spending, so sometimes you get these quarters where, you know, higher expenses were, were a drag on the bottom line. But, uh, yeah, really, this is a, a a weekly chart there's a, a lot to a lot to like here axon uh, used to be known as uh, taser used to trade mm-hmm. under, under the symbol tasr but they've uh, they've really branched out i mean they're they're they offer a lot more than just their their taser cameras now mm-hmm. um they have a, a cloud-based uh, system, uh, uh, sensors, and uh, uh, other products that they're they're selling. So they're kind of branching out, uh, you know, a, away from the the Taser uh, cameras. And uh, I just think that the chart really, really looks uh, looks good here. So don't own the stock uh, now, but uh, the fact that it's holding on to these gains and uh, the company had a, a lot of uh, positive things to say about demand uh, raised their outlook. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of watch for some sideways uh, trading here as uh, as we like uh, like to do but just identify the uh, identifying these stocks showing strength uh look at uh Axon's accumulation distribution rating of, of A minus. So you're seeing, um, you know, several stocks out there that are really showing good accumulation as they work their way higher. And, um, you know, Axon is showing that and now yeah. it's just kind of pulling back mildly here. Yeah, a really impressive move off of its lows from, you know, the, you know, June area here, late June uh with a low of almost 80 and now it's above 180 i mean that's, uh, that's pretty more impressive. than doubles in price yeah. yeah so but this is this is really a good example why you just want to you know look at look at weekly charts and then daily yes. charts because i mean do you are you really gonna you know think about buying a stock that ran from 80 all the way up close to, to 200 uh, no you don't want to chase it but you do want to see it hold gains you do want to see it show strength and support after uh, a breakout and axon is is doing that so the longer this uh, moves uh, sideways and, and holds on to a good chunk of these gains, I think the more likelihood uh, you could see another another mm-hmm. way into this stock. Yeah. So from the taser devices to now the on officer cameras and their cloud software, like you said, uh, we'll have to keep tabs on this accelerating revenue growth here and uh, forward looking earnings estimates mm-hmm. looking pretty solid too. And now let's take a look at CHX. This is uh, on the technology side of drilling so pretty interesting there uh an an interesting way to play the energy theme here seeing a pretty orderly pullback ken but it seems like it's at a, a critical juncture on the chart yeah, it's uh, it, you know just kind of trying to hold the uh, the 21 day moving average, but a similar situation to uh, AXON. Uh, Champion had a really nice uh, earnings report uh, recently that also showed a little bit of acceleration in uh, in revenue. But um, you know on the weekly chart here, you can see it's it's really coming out of this uh, this this big consolidation, and you see a lot of uh, volume on uh, up weeks, and then just look at over the past uh, two two weeks how volume has completely quieted down here so this is uh, this is really what you want to uh, see uh, in a on a on a weekly chart heavy volume gains lower volume uh, declines I think this one there was a lot of damage uh, done in the oil and gas sector today a lot of stocks uh, down uh, down sharply uh, uh, CHX was not immune but it is uh, really looking looking good here on the on the weekly chart um, low volume decline maybe attention kind of turning away from the stock but it's holding up uh, quite well amid uh, pretty good fundamentals again a really solid accumulation distribution rating and uh, look at those annual earnings estimates uh, very very solid as as well here so um, looks looks good fundamentally and technically all right and one more for the watch list is hdb which came up on your screen today ken a foreign bank here out of india has a bottoming base and in the early stages of breaking out it looks like yeah, this one uh, is actually uh, still in a in a buy zone here. Um, 
and it is uh, in the process of uh, breaking out of a, uh, a cup base, uh, looking uh, looking very good here. So you can see it's still in the bl on the weekly chart, still in that blue uh, shaded uh, five percent buy zone. Maybe let's switch over to the daily chart here and see how it's uh, digesting its uh, recent gains. And you know, again, uh, on a day where there was a lot of volatile action, a lot of stocks down three, four, five percent. Uh, uh, HDB is uh, just kind of testing the ten-day moving average here. Uh, you have a pivot there of 67.88, uh, so call the buy point 67.98. It's not even a point above that uh, entry. So this one, this one still looks actionable amid some pretty good signs of accumulation uh, lately. So the common bond among all three stocks today, they all have accumulation distribution ratings of, of uh, in the in the A area, which is mm -hmm. um, you know pretty pretty solid. Yeah, I guess, Ken, um, the tricky question for investors now is even with uh, some interesting setups or watch list stocks or potentially actionable buying opportunities, what would compel an investor to move something from their watch list to their buy list when many investors have been getting whipped around lately? Yeah, it's it's really it's really tough. I'm trying to think of a time when we've been in a in a confirmed uh, uptrend where it's been so challenging uh, making making money. So we just we talk about uh, getting uh, getting getting feedback from your from your stocks, and it's just it's an important point to uh, remember if you're if you're buying stocks and you, and you you're finding that you're down, you know, 1%, 2%, 3% below uh, what where what you paid for the for the stock. I mean, that that's really negative uh, feedback. So, if you've been putting money to work in the market conservatively and your 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 stocks are making some uh, progress, then, you know, that that that's a, that's a, that's a good sign. So, some people may find themselves in that situation, others may find themselves in at the other end of the uh, extreme where they're kind of buying and, and having to, to cut losses. So, right. just uh, let let the action in individual stocks uh, be your guide. It is still, uh, you know, our screens are are not really teeming with uh, with growth stocks uh, at this point. Uh, seeing stocks acting well after breakouts, uh, but some of these stocks uh, need time. So uh, just just take it take it slow here. Um, understand that the market is is dealing with a lot of uncertainty, and that can that can make for a you know a tough environment for indexes to make consistent uh, headway. Mm -hmm. So um, okay to nibble uh, here and there, and just just make sure you're getting mm -hmm. the, the feedback that you want. Yes. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Ken, and thanks everyone for tuning in. The team will be back with more tomorrow morning on IBD Live, so please join us for our daily morning live stream for the first 90 minutes of trade where we are interacting with you, our audience, and looking at stocks that you have on your watch list. And you can check that out uh, 10 minutes before the opening bell, investors.com slash IBD Live for all the details on that. We'll see you there, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow after the close.